How the narcissist was created. During the narcissist's childhood, they experienced a toxic environment that left them feeling deeply defective, unworthy and shame-filled. This could have included emotional or physical neglect, excessive pampering, or some type of abuse. Usually, the child experienced hot and cold attention from their caregiver, which left them feeling confused. Sometimes they were made to feel like a perfect child, while other times they were made to feel ashamed and worthless. The child learned that to receive the validation and love that they were desperately seeking, they needed to perform in a way that pleased their caregiver. The child was left with such intense feelings of abandonment and rejection, that were simply too painful to bear. On an unconscious level, they said, I refuse to feel these things. So, they cut off the part of themselves that was responsible for having them feel all of the deep wounding that they did not want to acknowledge. The amputation of the narcissist's true self. The child subconsciously amputated their true self, since that is the part of us that allows us to feel the full range of human emotion on an authentic level. Through these emotions, we are also able to feel our deep inner wounding, which was the aspect the child could not stand. However, when the child killed off the true self, they were left with only their ego to run the show. The ego rubbed its hands together in glee, since there is nothing more the ego loves than power and control. This was the birth of the narcissist. The narcissist's ego now rules. The ego was given full reign and completely inverted the narcissist's reality, creating a fantasy world for them to live their lives in. In this fantasy, the narcissist's ego now has them believing that they are special, superior and perfect. On a deeper level, when they unconsciously chose the narcissistic path, they underwent a psychological split. Their fantasy reality is not just dreaming or wishful thinking, they genuinely believe that their new reality is real. The ego knows that for it to remain the ruler of their life, it needs to hide the truth from the narcissist at all costs. This truth is that they are a flawed and imperfect human being, just like everybody else. Now, for the narcissist's psychological survival, this fantasy, where they are a god who sits at the center of the universe, must always be reflected back to them as absolute truth. Keeping the delusion afloat. The problem with the narcissist's projected delusion is it's merely a figment of their imagination. So, the only way to make sure that the delusion stays in place is to have constant evidence showing them that their perfect reality is real. Narcissists spend their whole lives seeking attention, admiration and approval because those are the things that confirm their fantasy for them. On the flip side, for the ego to protect the narcissist from the truth that they're not perfect, special or superior, it cannot allow in any evidence that would suggest otherwise. So, anyone who tries to hold the narcissist accountable for their negative behavior will be shot down in flames. Any criticism is evidence that the narcissist is not perfect or godlike, and the ego cannot allow that information to penetrate the fantasy. Pillaging life force energy. For a deeper look at what the narcissist is all about we need to go back to the severing of their true self. Our true self is what gives us access to an unlimited amount of life force energy. It's through this abundance that we can be our own source of security, survival, love, and validation. By having access to untapped life force energy, we can heal our inner wounding and step into a place of high self-love. So, when the narcissist killed off the true self, they cut off their own access to life force energy. Firstly, this means that they have foregone the ability to heal their inner wounding in this lifetime. Secondly, they now have zero capacity to be their own source of security, survival, love or validation. In fact, they don't have the means to experience love at all now, whether giving or receiving. Thirdly, the place where the true self once sat is now an empty black hole. Not only has the narcissist lost a valuable resource, but they're left with a gaping hole offering nothing but feelings of absolute disgust, self-loathing, shame and rejection. Now, the only way to relieve that darkness is to keep feeding it life force energy, which they now have to steal from others. The narcissist has unconsciously doomed themselves to a life as an energetic drug addict, in constant search for narcissistic supply, just so they can temporarily abate their inner black hole for another brief period.